Hello, wonderful peeps, and welcome to our latest dev interview as part of our mini indie showcase. I'm Harry Loizides, editor-in-chief for 61 Indie, and with me is Pavle from Chonky Loaf. And today, we're here to talk about Everhome. Hi, Pavle. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Uh, we had some technical difficulties, so we're doing this again. Uh, yeah. But we like wanted to have our conversation uh, recorded for posterity and for everyone to listen to what we're about to chat about. So, Pavle, if you could just give us a little bit of an intro of who you are, what Chonky Loaf is, and anything you want to chat about your prior uh, successes leading up to uh, the newest game that you're working on. Yes, thank you, Harry. So, as you said, my name is Pavle. I'm uh, 24 years old. Me, personally, I joined the team uh, about three years ago. Um, I was in game development before that as a hobbyist, but I was at school right back then, so I, I had no professional experience. Uh, however, the team behind Everhome, the oldest uh, uh, people in the, in the team, have more than seven years of experience in developing games and they used to develop games for virtual reality because they started in 2016, 2017 when VR was exploding. So we tried to uh, ride that wave and see if it, it become, becomes popular, which we now understand is a, a bit of a worse approach because we don't, we're not really excited for VR gaming as we are for Everhome, which is why we believe we are starting to have more success with it. We used to do PC VR gaming, which is not a, a huge market. And then Everhome as a game was born as sort of a labor of love because we enjoyed playing games like Stardew Valley and Five Times at, at Porsche and um, other uh, cozy RPGs and farming simulator games. And just after creating the idea of the game, we realized there is a huge market for it and there is a huge gap of people uh, wanting to find new uh, content in that genre which uh, then we saw as a potential for creating a, also commercial success and something we can work on professionally. Nice. Uh, so you mentioned Stardew Valley. So are there any other inspirations or indie games that you really like that might be uh, inspiration towards this game or some ideas that you really like? You're like, all right, how can we cherry pick these ideas and put our own spin to them? Yes. Um, obviously, Everhome is greatly influenced by like the classics in the genre, and we have no problem with uh, saying that. Like Games like uh, uh, Little Witch in the Woods, which has a great story. My personal favorite, which is Moonlighter. It has awesome animation, some great combat, uh, interesting mechanic in the shop. And uh, there are games that are not even that similar, like Hades, which I'm hooked on right now. I have like, I think more than hundred hours played in it. So uh, we're trying to find ways to implement great stuff from, from great games into Everhome while keeping it, uh, the genre intact and giving the players what they can have. Obviously my time at Porsche and Stereo Valley as pillars of the, of the genre are a great influence to us. And we're like trying to have a, it's, it's a bit uh, hard to say, but trying to create a successor of that. Right. No, I think a lot of what I've seen in Everhome kind of draws inspiration, like you said, from all of those and is has the potential to hit as one of those great in the future. Thank you. Thank uh, you. So we've been trying for about four minutes. Can you give us a summary of what is Everhome? Okay. Everhome is a cozy RPG that aims to give players um, freedom to play as they want. So if they want to uh, use time to just chat with townsfolk in Everhome, they can do that. If they want to put all their time into farming, they can. If they want to experience more complex combat, they can do that. If they want to enjoy mini games in uh, fishing or mini games we're going to implement in seasonal events and stuff like that, they can do that. However, if they get bored by that, they can even get more deeper into Everhome and experience the story of Everhome and the mystery of Everhome and get more playtime from that and more enjoyment from that. We're trying not to, what the, the, the biggest thing we're trying not to do is have a linear story that pushes player towards the, towards it. So we uh, implemented a new, uh, I'm hesitant to say new mechanic because it's not something super technically different. It's a reality bar. I won't 
say more about that in order not to like spoil stuff but there is some interaction with NPCs that needs to be done in order for story to progress and allows us to create a non-linear story. So players who just want to enjoy the game without diving into the story can do that, no problem. Nice. So is that part of the open-ended RPG that you guys have been uh, messaging about? Yes, it is. Nice. Uh, And you also mentioned about NPCs, that certain one of them are... Um, necessary for story progression, but are there are there NPCs that also have their own stories that you can kind of follow along as a side adventure? Technically, all of the NPCs have their own stories, which then come to the great Raider Everholm story. So oh, yes, that. all of them have a backstory for their own, of their own. Nice. Uh, and you also mentioned that you, Hades was a, a slight inspiration for um, combat. Uh, how does combat meld into this idea of Everhome? Uh, if you okay, speak okay. About that. a really interesting question. Uh, th- the other part of the dev, th- dev team that's looking for this might hate me because I'm pushing the, the Hades part of it. It's not like the... The biggest so don't don't expect the combat to look like uh like Hades, so to do some expectation management right now but however we are putting plenty of time into into combat and uh, we understand that it's hard to balance a super like uh combative game with a cozy rpg so there are places in everhome which are meant for combat like currently there is the dark forest in the overworld and there is the underworld area which is dungeons which are dungeons which are procedurally generated and you can uh, get uh, unique loot down there so there's an incentive for players to go down there if, even if they don't want to, to explore it there are unique biomes so new places to see and also unique enemies that they can interact with and uh, fight wonderful uh so we got being cozy we got uh intimate store we have dungeons with fighting uh what are some other things that you can do in this game that kind of all melt into each other okay so one of the biggest things we're also proud of in everhome is magic there's magic that can help you so that can help you with farming or fishing or uh, crafting and uh, uh, get, gathering resources you can also use magic in the dungeons in combat so as i said we're really proud of saying that we're hugely inspired by stardew valley we're trying to create a stardew valley with more complex combat uh, unique graphics and magic so that's what 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 we would like to to embody in everhole also there there will be pets in the game that can also help you with farming and crafting and everything that magic can help with i love that uh is the chunky loaf going to be in the game? Uh, that's a good, uh, good question. I we I, right now we don't have a uh, idea for that, but I think it's a great uh, idea, and I'm going to share that with team. And we, we will have uh, Harry in the in the credits if we put in it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, because um, I have a cat myself, and once I saw that the name is called Chunky Loaf, and the picture on your website is just a cat. Uh, yeah. just sitting on the loaf I was like this is that going to be an absolute banger so I appreciate that <laughs> um, so going back to you talking about this being as a cozy game what are some things that you automatically think of when you're like this is a great cozy chill game it's, it's a thing we think about a lot so uh, our belief is it's the feeling of the game which is not so tangible. So I understand it's like a, not a greatest answer. So everything that surrounds the game, it's graphics, it's sound, it's uh, interaction with the player. And uh, that's what we believe is uh, what's supposed to be in a cozy game. But uh, to put it maybe more tangible, We'd like Everhome to be something people can play after a hard day of work or school or 
if they have like a, a bad day or a good day that's intense, they can come back to their houses and cozy up to, to their favorite place and then put the controller in their hands and enjoy our home for as long as they want. If they want it for, to be 15 minutes, they can do that. If they want to play for four hours, we can surely provide enough gameplay for them. Nice. Uh, one thing you also mentioned before was seasonal events. Um, are those going to be part of patches or are they already built into the game like from okay, yeah. January so, to December kind of thing? Yeah, when I say seasonal events, I mean like Halloween in Halloween or Christmas or uh, seasonal events like that in game time. So they're not going to be like real time. They're going to be in the game to provide more variety and to, get, to give players more stuff to explore and, and do and to help us to have a greater story. Right. No, I love that because then uh, if I'm feeling Halloween-y in July, I can have fun and put those things on. I don't have to wait yes, till October yeah, where it's exactly. a thousand times over. Uh, and you might have mentioned this already, but just for this section, how can you or how do you want Everhome to be perceived as its own experience um, as a cozy game? So you've mentioned a few things, but if you had to summarize it, what are some of the aspects of Everhome specific that you're like, yep, this is our Everhome stamp on cozy games? Yes. So uh, obviously, as I said, we, we pride ourselves to be, uh, we're not to be like super uh, egoistic. We try to be, yeah, try to be Stardew Valley with more complex combat, magic, and different graphics. Mm -hmm. Love that. Um, in terms of music, can you speak a little bit about that? Because I'm always a big sucker for uh, wonderful um, ambient music and sounds, and the trailers really showed some of it, and I just wanted to see if you have any more information on the audio and music side of things. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't have a person that's a sound engineer right now. We uh, like take time from our developers, for, from doing mostly our, our graphic developers, which are more artistic, are finding music and, and sounds. We are looking into into some composers, so maybe there is a there will be some unique unique music in in our home. We are definitely understanding how important sound and music is. As I said, it's a big part in a cozy game, so we're putting a lot of time and thought into that. Nice. So I, I guess I look forward to hearing the the ever home stamp of music. Um, are, is there anything else that you'd like to include at, that we might not have chatted about yet? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, our partnership with Freedom Games, mm -hmm. which is which came uh, in February this this year, and since then we basically upgraded. I like to say their uh, name speaks for their themselves. I understand it. This sounds a bit disingenuous because there are par partners and people usually like. Uh, talk highly about their partners, but this is really true. I mean, uh, we got a lot from them, like a lot of, um, a lot of influence, a lot of, uh, advice. I was trying to, to find a word, um, without them imposing on us. So anything we want to put in the game, we are free to put in the game. They don't try and, uh, like force us to do anything while giving us uh, explanations and advice on what to do. They helped us greatly with the Steam page, which is doing great thanks, thanks, to, thanks to them and thanks to all the people that are eager to play Everhome. Mm -hmm. um, they also uh, are helping in basically every way. We had a focus group of 15 people which tested Everhome and told us we we're on the right path. We had a uh, testing with professional game testers, which told us what we lack and what we need to put in the game if we want to have it, make it greater. So I really wanted to like take this time to really sincerely thank them and uh, do, do this as a, almost a promotion for them because they truly are a great team to work with. Yeah, I mean, every time I've played a Freedom Games uh, and chatted with them at PAXs and stuff like that, it's always been a great experience. So. Um, I'm happy to see that um, Freedom Games and Everhome is having a nice little mer uh, discussion with each other. So I'm really excited to see how that progresses. Yeah. Uh, so um, in terms of Everhome, where can people find it? Where is it possible release? 
Uh, yes. Can you speak on either of those? Okay. So, um, well, the, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously the Steam page. Ever home is on Steam. I think this is mirrored, but this is how it's spelled. Yep, I can uh, see it fine. Yeah, okay. So uh, you can find it on Steam. There is a, we have a landing page, Chonky Loaf. It's with O, C, H, O. Uh, it's not Chonky, it's Chonky.com. We have a Instagram page, Everhome uh, slash dev. It's not active currently. We some, just put some stuff. We're not currently doing uh, an active campaign, but we will in this month. And uh, we're planning on also having, uh, we're looking into other social media, but this is what we have right now where, where people can find stuff. We're planning on releasing Everhome um, first half of, of 2024, and we'll see where when the, the release date is but that's the plan for now. Wonderful. I really hope this uh, outside noise isn't happening. Do you guys hear anything? Uh, while you speak, we can hear, but well, while I was speaking, there was no, no outside noise. Okay, well, I apologize to everyone, but... <laughs> uh, you can't, can't like... Yeah. yeah, neighbors doing outside landscaping, I guess, at the <laughs> worst possible time. But so it was a great time, time. yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to keep on rolling. Um, so thank you so much, Pavle, for all this wonderful stuff. Uh, listeners and viewers, we're going to have all the info on our um, page. Um, thank you so much, Pavle, for this sit down. I really appreciate it. Uh, you, and giving us all this really great information. And then for anyone who is checking this out, you can go to 61indie.com slash showcase for other dev interviews, editorials, and more about... Um, this and other games that are going to be in the showcase. And of course, play more indies. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.